We took our dog Felix to Africa without flying and traveled all across Morocco with him. Today we will show you how we did it and share many details about the ferry we took, the required documents for dogs to enter, our exact route and the best hotels and attractions. We took a ferry from Algeciras on the Spanish mainland to Ceuta. This town is already in Africa but belongs to Spain. This was not only way cheaper than taking the ferry from Algeciras in Spain to Tarifa in Morocco, but it was also easier because of the paperwork. The ferry ride itself is only 30 minutes and very convenient. You can take your car with you so you don't need to rent a car in Morocco. We traveled with Balearia and they even had a nice dog area on deck so it wasn't necessary to leave the dog in the car. In the main areas on board, like the restaurant, dogs are not allowed to enter though. When you travel with your dog to other countries, the documents you need can vary a lot, depending on where your dog is from. Felix is from Germany, so he has to follow the same rules like all pets from the European Union. To enter Morocco as a dog from the European Union, he has to be chipped and has to have a pet passport with the rabies vaccine. Then we also had this, this is a health certificate, but we didn't need it, no one asked for it, but we wanted to be sure. And um, yeah, a rabies certificate. If you want to know more about entry regulations for a dog in specific countries, you can check out our dog travel guide ebook. In there we share many information about flying, traveling by car, required vaccinations, paperwork, how to find pet friendly places and much more. Before traveling to Morocco with Felix, we had a few concerns to be honest. We weren't sure how people would react to him because Morocco is a Muslim country and in their belief dogs are considered to be dirty. We thought this would be the reason why lots of locals would be scared of him, but once we arrived we found out that most people were super curious and interested in Felix. They tried to touch him, asked many questions and wanted to take photos with him. Sometimes it was even a bit overwhelming, but we were very happy how welcoming most Moroccans were. From the port in Ceuta we drove to Chefchaouen, which is the blue city. Most houses are blue of course and walking around feels like being in a little oasis because everything is so quiet and peaceful. For us this was the perfect start of the trip because Felix could get used to all the smells and cats and it was still not overwhelming because it's such a small city. Our second stop was Fez. This was the first time for Felix to walk around in a medina which consists out of many small alleys with lots of shops. To be honest, he got a little shock in there. Some parts were dark, there were donkeys and just way too many people. He even got very close to cats without trying to hunt them. Our third stop were the waterfalls in Uzud. The nature is absolutely beautiful, but make sure to come early in the morning before the tourist buses arrive. What fascinated us even more were the monkeys. Felix wanted to hunt them first, but some of them weren't scared of him at all. There were even some tiny interactions. Next up, we visited Marrakesh. The city is like a beautiful chaos and we really liked it, but for Felix it was a nightmare to be honest. Our hotel was located right within the Medina, so we had to park outside of it and walk around 1.5 kilometers through the tiny aisles with lots of people, sounds and smells. Felix has been to so many places, but so far not to a chaotic city like Marrakesh. So we decided it was best to carry him around the Medina because he felt very safe up on Dero's arms. Our fifth stop was Ait Ben Hadou, which you might know from movies like Gladiator or Game of Thrones. It's hard to believe that this place is even real because it's just so breathtaking. We then finally made it to the Sahara Desert as our sixth stop. On the way we suddenly met wild camels on the street and it was just so cool. Our hotel was a luxury camp right within the desert. We literally had the best time there. Most people only stay for one night, but we highly recommend to stay for two nights to really experience this place. We saw more camels and Felix was so fascinated of them. Seeing him so happy with all the sand was probably the best memory from this whole trip. We then drove through the Dates Valley and made it all the way to Tagazut. This area is popular for surfing and the amazing beaches. Felix had the best time running around in the sand with almost no people around. From there we drove all the way back to Casablanca but we didn't go into the city center because we didn't want to stress Felix again after Marrakesh. 
Before traveling to Morocco, we were a bit scared that hotels wouldn't be as dog friendly as they are in most European countries, but we soon found out that it was super easy to find an accommodation with a dog. We stayed in hotels from all different categories like B&Bs, small boutique hotels, big luxury chains and with private hosts and all of them were very welcoming. Only in international hotels we had to pay a dog fee. Whenever we went to restaurants, we left Felix at the hotel or we ordered food to our room. He doesn't mind to stay alone in a hotel room because we trained him to do that many many years ago. During the day we visited lots of different sites and mostly took Felix with us. Since not many people in Morocco have a dog as their pet, there are no rules about it. It doesn't really matter where you go. As long as you pay a small fee, you can literally bring your dog everywhere. We went to the tannery in Fes for example, visited lots of shops and markets. And all the beaches allow dogs, which is really really nice. This brings us to the next point. The reason why there are no rules about dogs at the beach is, as I said before, that most people don't have dogs as their pets. Instead, the streets are filled with homeless dogs and cats. They also live on the beaches and try to get food from the people going around. Every street dog we met was very very kind and we never had any problems. Whenever possible we gave them something to eat but some of them were very scared of humans which is quite sad. If you bring your dog to Morocco make sure to be aware of all the diseases street animals might carry though. We also saw many other animals like wild monkeys, camels and goats that climb on trees to eat the fruits. <laughs> Since Felix has a very thick fur, we traveled to Morocco in November when temperatures were not hotter than 25 degrees Celsius. For Sven and me it was like an extended summer and for Felix it wasn't too hot. In the Sahara it was the same. At night it even got freezing cold because temperatures can drop a lot. The whole trip took two weeks but you could spend much more time in this beautiful country. We hope this video encourages you to bring your dog along the way because it was such a wonderful experience for Felix as well. Happy travels and don't forget to like this video and follow our account. Bye bye and we hope to see you soon!